Show Chow Raymond Yuen Ching Shu Ida So Kai Lai Emily Wei Lai Shu Pierre Yuen Chuen Shu <coughs> Cynthia Chan Ting Chi Yung Shu Stephen Yuen Wing Shu Sandy Ying Yu Shu Grandchildren Great Grandchildren Deputy Chief of Navy Sir Maritime Component Commander, Commanding Officer, H.M. to this drama. Friends, and make no mistake, Mr. Shu, number one, had many, many friends. We have gathered today to remember the life of Hung Chua Shu, number one, to acknowledge our fortune in knowing him and to honour him. We've come together because in one way or another, his passing affects each and every one of us. And so this morning we will remember again and consider the life of one who was much loved. And we will commit him in death to the one who loved him far beyond our understanding. How though, do we do justice to a life like this? A life that was not only long, almost 89 years, but was also lived in two very different worlds. How do we adequately honour this man? The answer to that is that we tell our stories. We speak to each other of the man that we each encountered and knew. All of us from a unique and very special perspective as a father, as a husband, as a grandfather, as a shipmate, as a gentleman, and as a friend. We share, we tell stories, and we celebrate memories. And together we give thanks for a great life. Let us pray together. God our Father, we thank you that you have made each one of us in your own image. That you've given us gifts and talents with which to serve you. We thank you for Hung Chua, for number one, for the years shared with him, the miles steamed with him, the rigs cleaned by him, 
for the good seen and known in them, and for the love received from them. And we ask this morning that you would give us the strength and the courage to leave him in your care, confident in your promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have a reading brought to us now, and the reading is from Psalm 23. It will be read first by uh, Pastor Lee in Mandarin, and then it will be read, read by uh, Chaplain Barry in English. So, Pastor Lee. 诗篇二十三篇 你与我同在，你的杖，你的竿，都安慰我。在我敌人面前，你为我摆设宴席，你用油高料我的头，使我的腹杯满意。我一生的日子必有恩惠慈爱随着我，我也要住在耶和华的殿中。The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me, where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honoured guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and your house will be my home as long as I live. I invite you now to stand with me and sing our opening hymn, Amazing Grace. The words are in your service.
I've said, the way we remember, the way we honour a man like this is to tell his story. His story and our stories and the places that they intersect. And so we're going to move into a time of reflections and tributes and storytelling. And first we're going to hear from Number One's family. And we're going to begin by hearing from his eldest son, Raymond Yuen Ching Xiu. Good morning, Navy officers, fathers, comrades, and his best friends. Thank you for all of you attending his funeral service held by the Royal New Zealand Navy in Navy Base Chapel. <coughs> Let me first introduce myself, as already Chairman has introduced me. Before. I'm Rimmer Shu. I'm the eldest son of number one. My father has a wife. That's my mother, Un Xiao Jia, and four children who are Emily, my sister, Pierre, and Stephen, my two brothers. Also, my father has two grandsons and two granddaughters. They are Alexander, Jennifer, Eve and Ernest. To all of us, my father is a great and successful person. He is also a kind, hardworking and responsible dad. My father left his hometown, Wei Highway, in Shantung, China, and went to Hong Kong at the age of 20 in 1946 in order to seek for a better life. He did not work for Navy at first, but for the Royal Hong Kong Police. Before he completed the police training, he quit the job because he would like to see the world. He then worked for the Royal Navy as a laundry man from 1947 to 1957. After that, he served the Royal New Zealand Navy for 57 years until his retirement day on 1st of August 2014. Besides work, my father also buried our family a lot. Although we met him two to three times a year while the Navy ship visited Hong Kong or was on dockyard for repair, we all understood that whatever he did was for our family. When he returned to Hong Kong, he would bring us gifts or toys. We were happy and amazed. We treasured the time we spent with him. <coughs> I still remember the conversation between my father and I when I was four years old. Once he said, my son, you are a stupid boy. I replied, no, I'm a clever boy, not stupid. Since then, my father called me Ming Chai. Ming Chai, which means a clever boy in Cantonese, and it has become my nickname. <laughs> Man, when my father passed away in North Shore Hospital on December 29, only Emily, my sister, accompany him. My brothers and I were deeply regretted for that since the three of us were not by his best side when he passed away. 
And we learn from Emily that death passed away peacefully. We felt a bit relieved. Father, you have your new life in heaven. However, your image will always be in our heart. You are our greatest father, a responsible husband to my mother, and you are always the number one in our hearts. We love and we will remember you forever. Finally, on behalf of our family, I would like to express our gratefulness to Royal New Zealand Navy for holding this funeral service and to all of you who come today. Thank you very much. We'll now hear from one of number one's grandsons, Alexander Chung Wai Xu. Good morning, Navy officers, grandfathers, comrades, and his best friend. Once again, thank you for all of you attending this funeral service held by Royal New Zealand Navy in Navy Base Chapel. I'm Shu Chumai Alexander, I'm his eldest grandson. Though I do not live in New Zealand, I have a great relationship with my grandfather. Whenever I came, my grandfather would bring me to lots of places and would share lots of interesting things with me. I also got to know my grandfather more from his friends. The recent visit to my grandpa was in August 2014. I stayed with him for three weeks, and we talked a lot. He shared his late Navy life with me. He showed me around in Philemo, and he told me how he fished at the pier. He shared with me how he walked in shorts and slippers when he was on board in cold weather. He showed me the interview from BBC after he got the Queen Service Medal in 1988. From the conversation and the interview, I got to know the working condition and the life of my grandpa. My grandfather, number one, is a tough person. As long as it was good for the family, he would do it. He left my grandma, my grandfather, my aunts and my uncles to work for the New Zealand Navy so that our families, including myself, can have a better education and a better life. He is also a passionate person in serving New Zealand Navy. After his retirement from the ship, he was offered a small place to continue his laundry service in Philip. Every day when he woke up, my aunts would drive, him, would drive him to work. One of his friends told me, as my aunts needed to work until evening, sometimes he would take the bus with his Navy friends and then we walk 10 minutes home. My grandfather is also a smart person, according to his friend. One of him was in San Francisco, and the Navy was offered a day off. So he was allowed to browse around the city. As he wanted to save all the earnings to his family, he chose not to take a taxi. Instead, he walked on the highway as some of you may be aware. Others would call the police. And then the police came in a moment. My grandfather pretended not to be able to speak English. <laughs> Instead, he pointed to the Navy ship. The police called the Navy and checked if number one was on board. And once everything was confirmed, the police drove him back, and he could save the money for the family. <laughs> From her how he started his life in Royal Navy to Royal New Zealand Navy, and from how he worked hard till he got a QSM. It was not an easy life, but I'm sure my grandpa, number one, would be proud of what he did for the family. Besides, all my family members are proud of my grandpa, number one, too. We love you. Thank you very much.
to conclude this section of family tributes, we're going to hear now from one of number one's granddaughters, Jennifer Yang Fung. I'd like to now 
ask Deputy Chief of Navy, Commodore Dean McDougall, to come and to tell a story from a different perspective, I imagine. Uh, and this is one of the things that intrigues me about uh, situations like this, is that often we, we know somebody but only in one slice of their life. And so here's a chance to share some of the, the Navy slice. So, I would like to commence uh, by first passing on the sincere condolences of Admiral Jack Steer. He would like to have been here today, but unfortunately, yet coincidentally, he's on a diplomatic tour to China. Mr. Hung Chu Shu. Mr. Shu, or as he's fondly known by all in the Royal New Zealand Navy, number one. He originally started work as a laundryman in 1947, as we've heard, on board the Royal Navy St. Bride's Bay, and subsequently served on six Royal Navy ships that had contracts with the, for Hong Kong laundrymen. He then joined the Royal New Zealand Navy as a laundryman in 1957. Number one served in nine Royal New Zealand Navy ships, and was involved in two conflicts the Korean War and the Malaysian Confrontation. He also held a contract for the provision of laundry crews to the Royal Navy during the Falklands War. This gave him a great advantage. He was more informed about Royal Navy ship movements in the Falklands than our commanding officer who was leading the New Zealand support to the conflict. He sailed on board Royalist, Rotowiti, Pukaki, Taranaki, Blackpool, Otago, Wellington, Canterbury, and his last seaborne posting being Wellington in 1996 when it decommissioned. During these, during these postings, he was never backwards in providing the engineer very clear advice on where his shortcomings lay, <laughs> especially around the provision of steam. <laughs> Whilst in the surroundings it would be inappropriate to give an example of this advice, let it be known that the engineer was never in doubt of number one's requirements. While he may have been a gruff, may have been gruff with the engineers, each fortnight when the suppliers are paid for the laundry allowed to be done at public expense. Once the suppliers had paid the bill, a tray of wontons that number one had prepared in the ship's galley would be sent to the wardroom. I can still taste them today. Number one had been at sea for 33 years when I joined the Navy. And for most of my entire seagoing career, he was at sea with me, giving me the opportunity to serve with him over and over again. Then when I came ashore and was given the privilege of commanding this establishment, number one again was there with me, making sure my uniforms were always ready for any required activity. <coughs> While we have gathered here in the morning of passing Mr. Shu with the family, we also share in your loss. Raymond, Pierre, Stephen and Emily we thank you for supporting him and his desire to support us. I acknowledge that for the best part of his life, he was at sea with us, supporting his family financially, but in absence. For 57 years, Mr. Shu served the men and women of the Royal New Zealand Navy, and everybody who has served with him has fond memories of him. This is very evident in the posts that have been made on the Navy Facebook page on the announcement of his passing. He was proud to serve in the Royal New Zealand Navy and loved the interaction with his fellow sailors. At the recent morning tea to mark his final retirement from the Royal New Zealand Navy, he made the observation to me that I had been promoted Commodore, which I took as a congratulation. However, he quickly added up, but I'm still number one. <laughs> number one, all the doves have been done all the accounts have been paid, it is time to close the steam cock, switch off the washing machine, 
Rest in peace, my friend. Can I ask you now to stand and join with me in the singing of our second hymn, the name of the Eternal Father? faith or not people of faith, 
wonder at times about the life to come. Wonder about this thing called heaven. Perhaps we wonder if there is such a thing. What happens when we die, I ask? What is it like? What are the answers? Well, this afternoon I have to admit that not even my security clearance goes high enough to get that information. There are some things that we ministers don't know, although you didn't hear that from me. The truth is that none of us knows the answer to that question. That is a mystery known to God alone. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad. So when people ask me what happens, I have to answer, I don't know. I don't know all those answers. But there are two things that I do know. Two things that can give us cause for confidence. Two things, dare I say it, that can even give us cause to celebrate. Two things that I'd like to share this morning. And the first is this. The Bible reveals to us that through death we are changed. But somehow that we also remain the same. We're changed and yet we remain the same. Let's take a look at that for a moment. Some of my favourite passages in the Bible are the passages in the Gospels where Jesus appears to his disciples after his death and his resurrection. We just heard Michael read one such passage. Two disciples are walking along on the road to Emmaus and suddenly Jesus is with them. And Luke tells the story of how Jesus drew alongside and how they talked to one another. The disciples asking questions and Jesus providing some answers. There was another time on the beach when disciples had gone out fishing. Mr. Shu would probably appreciate that. They hadn't caught anything. And as they were pulling in their nets, probably a little depressed, a stranger on the water's edge called out to them, try throwing your nets over the other side of the boat, and it was Jesus. And then there was a third time when the disciples, frightened about what was going on, were meeting together behind locked doors. And as they were there, huddled in a room together, Jesus appeared in the midst of them. Now each time these disciples saw Jesus, but in the beginning they didn't recognise him because something about him had changed. The two who walked that road with him, 11 kilometres it was, hot, dusty road in sandals, I'm imagining that was a few hour journey. But it wasn't until they sat down to eat with him at the end of the day that he broke bread, that was when they knew who he was. Same thing with the fishermen. They saw him on the beach, they heard his voice, but it wasn't until he repeated an earlier miracle, telling them to fish over the other side of the boat, that they really recognised that this was Jesus. He was different. No denying it. He wasn't recognised, he'd changed. But in the really important things, the intimate, uniquely Jesus things, the things that made him the special person he was, he was still exactly the same. And those they recognised. The way he broke bread. The same way he had many times before. The way he called out to the fishermen. And the distinguishing marks. The holes in his hands and in his side. This was Jesus. And I want to suggest that the same is true for number one. The things that made him unique, his loyalty, his commitment to his family, his honesty, his hard work, all of those things that made him a unique and special individual, he carries those things still. And he is recognisable as the one we knew and loved the one we honour today. For Jesus, the pain of his death was gone. The exhaustion of carrying the cross was gone. And 
that's true for number one also. The tiredness of age, the frailty of growing old, from those things he is released. And he is at peace. <coughs> he is still the man we knew and loved. In those special things that made him unique and set him apart, well, he carries those with him still, and always will. The second thing I need to say this afternoon is much shorter, but no less important. And that's this, that in Christ Jesus, even at a time like this, when we mourn a loss, there is hope to be found. Let me assure you of that. There is hope for a future, hope in a future, for all of us, and for number one. He has left a legacy in children and grandchildren, in friendships and relationships that will extend for a very long time. And in that legacy and in that memory is hope. Hope and peace. And those are surely things worth holding on to. saying the Lord's Prayer as it's printed on the back of your service sheet. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At the conclusion of our service, you're all warmly invited to gather together down at the Vince McGrath Galley for some refreshments. Uh, the burial service will then take place at uh, Snapper Rock uh, burial site, um, and it will be at 1300 at 1pm, and everyone is most welcome to join there for that. I now invite you to stand for our final commendation. God alone is holy and just and good. In that confidence, therefore, we commend you, Chu Hung Chu, to God's judgment and mercy, to God's forgiveness and love. Blessed be God the Father, who has caused the light of Christ to shine upon you. So go forth from this world in the love of God the Father who created you, in the mercy of Jesus Christ who redeemed you, in the power of the Holy Spirit who strengthens you, in communion with all the faithful, may you dwell this day in peace. And now may the Lord who makes all things holy and whole make you also holy and whole, knit you together, body, soul and spirit, and keep you in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, now and always. Amen.